we are going to implement this flip down counter uh, as a Beamlaw application and uh, wrap it in a Beamlaw package and release it so that everyone can use it by installing it in their own website. So I have looked in the documentation already. Um, basically, let me show the docs first. We are opening it in a new tab and go to flip down and it has a couple of options. Basically, you create a new flip down object with, uh, with a timestamp that is the end time. You can start it with start. By default, it searches for an element with ID flip down. Uh, you can also customize it in case, for example, you want to have multiple of them on a single page. You can customize the theme to be dark or light, and you can also uh, provide custom headings. This is fun because this is Hungary and I just noticed I'm from Hungary. Um, so that was a big smile for me. And basically these are all the settings there are. There's also a callback uh, in case uh, the time runs down so the application can do something and that's basically it. There's a distribution uh, or dis well, distribution folder and uh, there's a minified and non-minified version so we can take a look at it. The CSS is uh, nicely namespaced with a flip down class everywhere um, so that uh, it won't cause conflicts, assuming there will be a single version of this flip down and no other application uses the same class. So it's like uh, the best solution that is generally used out there. And as for the JavaScript, uh, whoops, that was the minified version. No, sorry. <laughs> I meant to open this one. So it does uh, uh, set the flip down variable or object on the global namespace, which I don't really like. Uh, and we will, I haven't checked yet, we will have to check whether it sets any other uh, global variables, which I would love to avoid. And then basically that's it. So it looks pretty good. Um, so we can get started working on it. So basically there is this uh, HTML element. We don't need the rest, so just to verify it works. Uh, with only that, let me remove everything else. So that was the HTML. It still appears and works. As for the CSS, the rest was only used for the, uh, the other content here. And this, I think, was... Uh, broken by accident. And there, the JavaScript, we don't need a console log or anything. This runs down for now. Um, the toggle, toggling the theme, that's nice for the preview. We don't need it. We don't need to print the version of flip down. Then flip down the starts. And yeah, this is basically it. Uh, the absolute minimum and it still works. So that's nice. Okay, here to the Boomla control panel, let's create a new website, sorry. Uh, go to the bottom, create with empty file system developers only. Let's name it flip down .net. There you go, this is our package. Let's open the ID, it's not installed on the website yet, so let's do that. It was now installed under, under uh, sys packages, nice. And now because the website is not empty, now we get an error that the root file has no type, which is correct, it has no type. Uh, there is a very small application, uh, page application that I'm usually, usually using for these packages to keep the size of this package as small as possible, which is page.app.duma.com. Uh, it's it's imported in other packages, uh, so you may have seen this before. Okay, so I'm going to install this on Flipdown. Um, and now in the new panel, you will see this package. This is this is another version of the front end tool chain before this new Boomla theme was released. Um, so if uh, uh, the the new so if the sys file has a, a version attribute, I think it, sh it has to be set to one. Let's try it, version int 
shall be one. Was it string? I think it should be. Yeah, exactly. So if you set it to one, this will not be injected, and then the uh, uh, the website builder could inject uh, a different front end toolchain. So that's the way versioning is solved in Boomla now, so that we can iterate and make the front end toolchain better without breaking old websites. So historically, it was in the Boomla. Uh, operating system instead of just the website builder that is now built on top of the Boomla OS. Okay, but I want to undo this um, because uh, I'm happy with this toolchain here. All right, uh, so we want to use this uh, uh, this application for the front page, showing IDE. There you go. It's uh, within the package under .new. Let me uh, let me just use the same type. Okay, plus page.app.bibna.com. So maybe if we click this to follow it, there you go. We can just copy that and go to the root page and set its type. We could set the sys packages prefix here, but we don't have to. Okay, there you go. This site has no title, so let's call it flip down. All right. We are getting closer. Um, so let's let's have an application here. Um, let's create a file for holding all the applications. In which case, there's just one apps. Or should I just call it version one or version two? Let's just call it version one or yeah, version one because there will be no other application in this pack. It's just this one. And in the future, uh, so the problem is the, the the file type, this one that will be used in other websites, uh, shall be immutable so that data migrations in the future can happen uh, without breaking any sites. All right, I don't want to explain too much here. Anyway, I'm just going to use this to for our application. So let's call it, let's give it a type at one. Um, and 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 we should have an instance uh, something here on the right side <laughs> that would be tricky now um okay that so this this page application that i'm using now uses a different an older uh, concept of how contents shall be organized on a page so that's just uh, example flip example counter maybe so the thing is, we have to change the bucket here. This is a concept that will be most likely phased out in the future. This doesn't show that it was bucket two. Yeah. Uh, if you wonder how I know this, that's because I wrote this application. And also on the structure panel, well, you can see there are two valid uh, buckets, but it doesn't tell you too much. And there were other problems with this solution, so that's why we are going to uh, that's why we are using uh, another approach where we create new files for this instead of using buckets anyways uh, i should stick to this so now we have a, an example counter and i go into this application and i want to implement the inline method so that we don't get this error file type missing oh, actually that wasn't set so i come here as well and say version one Okay, now the file type is missing on the inline file, which is nice. I usually use this uh, 4E engine, embedded JavaScript engine. There you go, now it's printing nothing. Good. So now we can start with this, just get it working first. Um, so this is the HTML, and then we should have a style sheet. Sorry, uh, it should come from distribution. I'm going to use the unminified version. Style.css. I don't need any namespacing or similar. So let's just use um, static one. And we will need a script.js file. I like to keep the Boomla methods at the top and the JS file should be static one as well. 
and in the body we should come here back back and take this file raw copy all of it insert here save and now all we have to do is uh, reference these script and and starship files so write some embedded javascript here so let's say more script file shall be source dot select dot dot script dot js and um, wow and the style file or css file shall be style dot css and um, source shall be script file dot path plus I want to cache it so the cache value shall be script file dot body hash there you go similar for the CSS file mm. Okay. Actually, let me just come here, find a script. And replace this part. Okay. That's the script. Here again, I'm going to cheat. I found the longest one, nice. Okay. Good. And the hat shall be, or maybe we should define the hat here and just append to it. And here response dot attribute string had shall be this. All right, but this is not enough because we haven't um, added this code snippet. So, the Aether modified this, uh, which, which I probably prefer because this is a global variable and we have no way otherwise to prevent this from polluting the global namespace. So let's wrap it in in a function so that it will be scoped and then yeah, just keep it at the top and add our custom stuff here maybe okay then come back where was it here copy paste it here All right. That should work. Or so I think. Let's see why it doesn't. And it does. That's a good start. We are 14 minutes in. Okay. So let's uh, parameterize it then. What are the things we want to be able to customize. Well, it would be really nice if we could just right click it and uh, set a custom end time. So let's do that. For that, we will need to install store sky config. The sky config uh, 
configuration settings editor whatever uh, let's let's click the docs so you see it in case you're interested so this is the one you should probably have seen at this point so install on Beamla on flip down there you go so to add the context menu uh, here we add context menu so we implement this interface or method or whatever and we have to set it to context menu one and inside it we create a page so this page will be called let's call it settings then the user clicks this context menu entry oops i mean the name is settings the title is settings this will be the one shown as a context menu entry so let's come back here right click there you go settings so what happens if the user comes here there are no options so let's just add them first we need to create a group because you have to create a group um, settings we don't need the name here because well, there will be just one group and then we want to have an integer input field um, and let's customize it right click settings um, and call it timestamp timestamp minimum well it shouldn't be less than zero because it's an unsigned integer we don't need to set the max editor actually oh yeah so the minimum maximum is just uh the edge values so we can leave it at that actually it shouldn't be negative so i will write this this is the maximum it can't be bigger anyway because it's integer 32 so that's the maximum value anyway we don't need um, any prefix, suffix, placeholder. Actually, let's add a realistic placeholder. Was it? Oh, almost. Just add the current timestamp um, so that people have an idea of what kind of a value they are expected to enter. And let's add a tooltip. Enter the. Um, counter and time in unix timestamp format you tip you can use not that one just give them okay Okay, nice. Enter the counter and time in Unix timestamp format. So if you can use epochconverter.com. Okay, so let's say we want to end in say one week. So let's use this one, human to timestamp. Let's copy that one. We can come here and save it. Actually, it's not nice that this is too small you can see the size that we need here um, so we can use four minus I use six okay nice um, as a default watch how we use as a default volume like we could inherit the default from uh, having it set here like timestamp I'm not sure if it makes sense to have a default value because it will run down in the future anyway. So let's not have it. Mm. Was it enabled? I wasn't sure. Yeah, there's no checkbox, so it's not using that on the editor either. So that's nice. Come back here, inline. Okay. So here we can say that. So timestamp shall be f is the instance of this application of tribute in 32 timestamp. So this will hold our value. 
but then we will have to pass it somehow into this element. So data mm, data data. I'm just going to create an object here with all the, the parameters. So let's create more terms shall be an object where we say timestamp shall be let's just use this right here and then we can convert it to json format here and just embed it you fill up html encodes for html encoding it and then json.stringify forms so we take this object we turn it into a json string and then we html encode it and then we inject this value into this data data or data forms maybe uh, html argument okay so in our script uh, we will have to make this a little bit more sophisticated let's find this we don't need anymore. This we don't need. This we don't need. So go back to the documentation at the top. And okay, so we are going to use the headings and the theme as well. Let's start. wrong okay I was changing the keyboard language I think no, that was the right one day hour minutes second or maybe days hours minutes seconds How's the default? Okay. And the timestamp, instead of using this, we're going to take it from the HTML and use it here. Let me save this, come back here. So instead of using this global flip down ID, we are going to use uh, a random generated ID. Um, actually, let me create a namespace here and then I'm going to generate a globally unique identifier. There you go. So this is the, the, the base ID, but because there might be multiple one of, of these on the page, we are not going to use an ID. Instead, we are going to use it as a class. This is for the CSS, so you're not touching that, but we are adding our unique class name. Uh, in case you are forking this application and or package and creating a different one, make sure to change this perfectly unique ID to a different one. Okay, and in the script, we are going to find all these uh, elements with these classes. Um, document get elements by class name. Let's avoid the typos. So document dot get elements by class name. This I think we don't need the dots. Or just call it else. Just see that it works. Console, don't need that one. There you go. It's found a single element. Nice. And then we are going to iterate on each of them to turn all of these into a single, uh, into a working uh, counter. So for 
Actually, we can use lat here because now this is running in the browser. I prefer lat there. Uh, on the server, we can't use that because there we are running JavaScript 5.1. And we have no compiler, so we are using this for loop, <clears throat> this old syntax, which is fine. So this will be in JSON, or maybe just call it JSON times JSON. JSON parse farms JSON shall be farms um, if that fails actually we sh sh should continue trying with the the others so maybe instead of throwing an error say console.log failed that uh, flip down could not find um, attribute this one I'm just moving into separate variables so that I'm not making any typos or either not or neither. Um, okay, and we should continue the for loop at this point. Okay. As for the parameters, object, if this fails, again. Could not parse there you go. So at this point our parameters object is available and clean. So it has a timestamp object which we can or a value which we can use. It and it will have all the others later. Okay, and so we create the element, we take this attribute, yeah, we have to give it an ID, which was explained here and here. So we should pass the ID in here, which is not set yet. So but ID shall be, let's use the same namespace plus something random. Um, maybe new date. This is a trick for generating a number that contains the date and I also am going to suffix this with the iteration number so it's like pretty solid to be unique and then we are going to set it um, HTML element set ID how to set ID using JavaScript all right, nothing fancy. So l.id shall be id, and here we are passing it in, and console.log id, because I'm curious that it's as solid as I said it would be. Looks good to me. And it works. So here is our parameter passed in, and
it's six days or actually almost seven days so everything looks good if we reload the page the counter continues so it's really a fixed date in the future nice so it seems the light one was the other yeah okay so we want to use dark as the default uh, let's parameterize the theme now come here and say theme shall be f dot chain attribute string so we are going to use a default for this value so i'm going to set it on this file theme default shall be light no actually it was dark okay and if we come here right click settings we can add another it will be a string and we want to use a select list because there will be two values in it oops settings theme theme inheritable yes tooltip doesn't need to be too chatty use six as in the other as well so they will be the same width and then to set the actual values we are going to show the id there is no special front end for this because this is going to be done by the programmers anyway so here you can see left center right we are just going to have two values so i'm going to remove this and here we are going to say light and dark and it should show light dark good refresh and because that was already the default, uh, it shows the default value, which is dark. So that's nice. So at this point, we can indeed load this value from the, the chain. And that is passed in here. So we can go into our script. And here, instead of using this fixed dark theme, we can say theme that way we can come here settings change it to light and there you go actually because we wanted to have multiple um, timers on the page let me duplicate this let me turn one of them to the default dark both should be counting they are and let's change the end time for one of those by maybe roughly one day and yeah, it did change and they are both counting separately. So it's super nice. Did I leave anything on the console that I didn't want? Yes, it turns out. Let's remove that. Okay, and this is just an add by flip down to the console. Just kidding. So let's move to this. This shall be broken down in multiple lines and say hmm, maybe farms of labels of days I'm never sure whether the comma works here or not. Let me add it. I prefer to have it. And here again, let's edit, say, labels. Or maybe just label days. Huh, second, should be seconds.
This I can see. Uh, okay. So again, come here, settings, and make it customizable with a default value. So we will use inputs. So yeah, this is a this is a time where we might want to use another group with a special name and call it. Labels. This could come over here and just duplicate it a couple times. Oh, actually, let me first customize it before I duplicate it. No, that one. So it should be days, label days, placeholder days. Same bit. Mm -hmm. They will figure it out. Days, hours, minutes, mm. So there is no value set. Uh, it's not inheriting. It should be inheriting, but I think it doesn't show the checkbox if there's nothing to inherit. So we come here and actually let me copy these first and set them. Oh, let me turn this off. So yeah, the old tool chain uh, was using the control key for some special magic. That's why I'm having no luck with it. Not that one, this one, okay. So the default should be days, hours, minutes, seconds. Come back here, refresh, and now it shows. And obviously you want to customize it to see that it works, just add something there. Something happened. Cannot read proper days of undefined. Inline. Labels. Barons. Dot label. There you go. Okay, and as we can see on the bottom one, it's using the dashes in every place, so it works nicely. I'm going to preserve the tradition. And use Hungarian text for the second example here. Nice. So what else? I think we have parameterized everything there is. So we should be done at this point. Hmm, as for this dark version, yeah, let me go to the store and install a couple more apps. First to highlight the background and for the license, license, it's not here. Let me go to Yeah, this is what I'm using for all the Boomla packages. So I'm clicking install here, replace the application that I want to have installed to the Boomla MIT license, install it here. Access denied to install it. Ah, apparently uh, my, this is restricted, it's not open source. 
Let me quickly make it open source on my phone. I don't want to log out here. Control panel. I have too many websites, but I will find it eventually. Or not. Search. There you go. Settings. It's indeed closed source. Okay, let's try it again now. I marked it as open source and it worked. So, so for one, I wanted to add. Um, let me close these. So this is the new license, and I want to create a new page here under that as a sub page and call it license. And add the license here. Okay. Second. Uh, I want to install another very small app, uh, a markdown app, install, flip down, and that way if we refresh we can also go to the front page, add some text that is very lightweight, but we have to use the ID for this, so it's using this special app and say flip down counter mm. let's see that it then actually works okay A simple javascript based count down timer You can theme lights dark labels. on this package okay not too much chit chat and we could also install the background color app install here. That way we can easily place the bottom one on some background settings, make it something dark. Good enough. <laughs> oh yeah, unfortunately this uh, this page is not responsive, so if you want to see the responsive version of how this works, you will have no luck with it. Um, let me see how the demo works, because I haven't checked that. Okay, it's definitely readable, but like once we install it, it will be fine. It's just the package documentation will not be responsive. Um, I don't like that it's not centered here. So 
maybe the examples I'm going to wrap in a sim simple wrapper. Maybe call it example wrapper and put it above the example counter. Like we are going to wrap both. So this shall be nap one. I don't know if you know this trick. You can just say shall JavaScript about a JavaScript engine and then I'm not going to worry about implementing the dot inline method. So I'm just going to embed inline styles here. No big deal. Share, so it shall be display flex. I'm just realizing, I'm not sure how much this application will like if I, like, whether it's defining its own width or not, but apparently it is. We'll see, let me try. So display flags. Hmm. give it something so we can see it. And here I want to inline whatever is in there. So let's say f dot children dot inline. Just inline them all here and we are going to drop this in there. Please network connection. Oh. Again, my internet connection here is not the best. Success. Um, and move this in there. It's not accepted because we haven't defined it, but that's fine. Okay. Because I have used margins, not paddings. Okay. Yeah, I suspected that, so it's not centered, but the issue is probably with our div, so we shall give it an extra property to center or how to align this, this element. Um, so let's go back to the app. Actually, let's wrap this other one first. So duplicate. Go in here, remove that, and move this other element from the background color, example counter, cut, and paste it in the other one, paste in two. We don't need, don't need the background color anymore. We can also uninstall it, so the, oops, okay. Size of the package will not be too big, so we were at two gigabytes now. Uh, it's not telling the exact value. Oh, wow, that was a big one <laughs> because it's recursive. But um, <clears throat> I hope you're aware that this is not the actual size on the disk. So it's just, yeah, look it up. <clears throat> so example of wrapper. So now we want to make this one dark. Okay, and possibly use an even lighter volume here. Okay, so we want to be able to align it to the center. So maybe I like the drop down option. So let's duplicate this and say align. 
Hmm. Good enough. Oh, sorry. I mean this one. Left, center, and right again. Left, center, right. Come back here. Left, center, right. So we want to align it to the center. And this one as well to the center. Actually, I want to default align it to center. Did I just stop the recording? Oof, no. So, line, center. So if we come to the first one, <clears throat> we can just use the default. And then in the application, we are going to, so because this is going to be turned into the actual thing, Let's add some style definitions here. More style shall be. I'm wondering if I shall use um so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about compatibility here. Uh, usually I use uh, Flexbox for this, <clears throat> but I also, also use some CSS framework or something. Um, and I just can't recall quickly how to do it with blocks. So CSS, block, align, right. And I don't want to float it. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay. Um, I'm going to check Tailwind CSS documentation. Flexbox. Flex. And Start. So basically, I want to. Oh, we just need justify because that's the horizontal one for us. I basically want to copy. Wait. Wrong one. Justify start. Display flex it doesn't use any. So I was looking for uh, browser prefixed uh, versions. Apparently, it's not using them. Let me close these. Okay, so I'm not using important. So display flex. Aha, uh -huh. that's the key. So if I want to duplicate lines, D. Screen recording jumps in. Justify content shall be whatever is in after chain attribute string align. Now, sometimes I prefer to validate that it's a valid value. <clears throat> For safety, I don't want to inject whatever here. So we can do switch align case left, nothing to do. Yeah. K 
case center, nothing to do, case right, nothing to do. Default throw. New error, invalid, align. So justify content and another thing I want to check can I use flex. Hmm, unprefixed 97 and what prefixes shall we use? That's pretty good to be honest. So I'm hesitating to use the prefixes. All right. Um I'm going to use it. if I turn this off um, oh, but that's the same screen recording, not the editor that is uh, taking over. Okay, so we are going to say ms mos that kids. I know I prefer to keep the shortest at the top. Nice, and let's do the same with these. Okay. Let's see. Nothing happens. Why? So it's flex and justify content center. Maybe I didn't add this. Uh huh. Um. There you go. So if we change this to left, it will work. And if we change it to right, it won't work. Uh -huh. because it's not left. Left is simply an invalid value. It's probably start and end. Start and end. Flex start, flex end. But I think on the user interface, it's nice to use these. So let's call this align value. Put it in a function wrapper and here return flex start and center flex end and that's an invalid value. But here instead we are checking against that and whatever we return will be aligned to this. Nice. Okay, so now it's at the end, left aligned, it's at the start, was my center correct? Yeah, center was correct. Nice. And by the way, the others don't make sense because it's a single element. Okay, I want to put it back to center and update the docs to say that there's an extra parameter. Hmm. 
Okay. Now, <clears throat> another thing is, I wanted to check how much this pollutes the global namespace. So object.keys window dot length is 203. If you go to this other one, it's 203. So we have prevented pollution. That's nice. That's amazing. So normally if uh, we wouldn't have used this uh, wrapper here, let me just remove that. Refresh this page. It will still work, but uh, this will set some uh, objects or variables on the global namespace. And if there would be other applications using the same, they would conflict. So let me undo, and we are back to uh, our um, scoped version. Okay, so that's nice and clean. We can now release this for anyone to use. Uh, last thing, if they install this, uh, they probably want to have it added to their new panel. So we are going to allow that. Uh, for that, it would be nice if they could use a screenshot. So let's just use paint. I don't have anything better at my disposal on this machine, but I think it should be good enough. Okay, desktop. Um, flip down preview.png. Okay. So we want to add this preview image to here, there you go, oops. Yeah, in this ID, you have to turn on the tool chain for uploading stuff. And what I'm unsure about right now was how to do this. So let me check, templates, clone, whatever, open. Open the IDE and go into, actually just use any element that has an image-based preview. So go into UI kit and find an image-based preview. Is there any? Maybe not. I oh, know. Okay, let's recall from memory then. So show an IDE, follow its type chain to see the actual app. There are two files. Preview info is telling where it's, I think it's, we have to, to, to set this to image. So I'm just going to copy this line, come here. How was it named? Preview info. image and then the actual file would generate the response so we should name it dot preview so this shall be named dot preview and it's an image that's fine let's see if that works what happens if we drag this here ah there's no sys new file so we can't drop it there. Example counter. Uh, I know what, what is happening now. So there was a, an old interface for, for this, which was calling this new preview. So to support both, we would have to create a new preview. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay to support both. So let's keep that. And also, 
we want to let's go to this new and copy this file because for other users we have to create a oops, dot new file that shall be holding our example counter This field is not currently used, but I'm not sure about the future. And we don't need this one. And the example time should be far in the future. Whatever, they will set it. So I think we are done now. The best way is to just try it. So I'm going to commit our changes, implement flip down counter app or wrap flip down counter in a package. Good enough. Um, was there anything I wanted to remove? Sky config we do need, this we do need. I might remove the ID afterwards. That's fine, that's fine, okay. And I want to mark this as open source so that others can not hear settings others can also make them source uh, install this we have just created another website so we can try it there oh the install button is not on it so let's go to the not here sorry store install ah install on flip down and maybe we want to add an install button to the bottom or to the top or somewhere. Oh, and I wanted to add some space there. Maybe not. Mark down above that. IDE, mark down. Just add some space. Too much. All right, good enough. What if I remove all of it? Ah, oh, there's a default spacing there. Okay. So this will automatically, by default, install the same package we are on. So nothing to configure there. Um, close this. If we refresh, there's again to commit add install button. Close this one. Okay. So now, if you are on this website, you can click install and do not install this on this other one. Let me go back here. So now it should show up as a new package. TDDDD. What is happening here? Showing IDE. <clears throat> now we are in a package, so we can't change the file system of this uh, website. So if I was to come here and I don't know, do something, it will tell me X is denied. But for debugging purposes, we can break this connection. So the package link is read only and mounting this package. But if we change it to scope, it will retain all the properties, except now it's editable. So now it's just connected to our website. And now I can come here and do stuff like create a new file. So that's great for debugging. Now the question is, first, let me remove this. I'm not sure if it's interfering in any way. It's not. Actually, let me keep going that way. Preview info and preview. And this is just an image file.
What happens if I remove this? Then there's nothing. Hmm. Okay, another alternative is what if I remove these for now? That way it will work. <clears throat> and I figure I, I will figure this out later. Um this is a new method how the previews work and because it's still a work in progress, I, I think I didn't publish that part of the documentation. So yeah, after we figured out how to fix it, uh, we have to apply this change to the actual package. So this means removing these and saying fix preview image. By the way, why are we using an image-based preview? Like, we shouldn't. <laughs> no. Okay, let me come back here. Like, the whole point of this new interface was to allow HTML-based previews so that users can see um, the actual previews, like if configuration changes, for example. So add a preview info file, preview info, and that was Type shall be HTML. And that's something we had here. So I'm just going to copy, follow the type chain, find the preview info file, viewport width. I'm going to just copy it as is. Reload for better formatting. No type is needed. And we are going to go and see this one as well. So it's using that apps be one helpers preview inline. So apps be one helpers preview inline.js, which is it's basically adding a padding optionally, but there was no parameter supplied, so this doesn't apply. So basically, it's just calling that, which we can do ourselves. Yeah, that was the old image body. The simplest form to do this is to use the embedded engine. Yeah, the old tool chain doesn't use that endpoint. So we have to publish it first and install it in the other one to see. Let me do that. We can always check uh, out this older version later if that fails. So use HTML based preview image. I'm closing these, that as well. Open this site. Undo until the flip down package is gone. Nice. Come back here. Install again on the website. Refresh. And it's not showing, but I think it's because of the background image or sorry, the background color, or maybe not. <laughs> ah, I know what is happening. The thing is, 
in the preview, we are not allowing JavaScript. Um, so it couldn't be rendered, obviously. So for this reason, we have to use an image-based preview now. So I'm going to undo this, go back to the version history, fix preview image, that was the older one, just call it old, and publish it onto the main one so we lose the change we made with the HTML-based preview. And now again, I want to undo the installation, install it again, install on Beamla, on that one, installed, refresh. Now we can see the image base preview and maybe add it here. And there you go. And we should be able to parameterize it, make it light. That's maybe nicer if we drop it here. Maybe we don't need this one, this button. Ooh, it's getting really, really cool. And then we can change things like um, left align it. Nice. So it seems everything works. So that was it. Now the only thing left is to publish it to the Puma store, which you can do by sending me an email and I will put it up there. Yeah, that was it.